Hi, I'm Father Joe. A priest recently sent me a great story about his time in seminary, and he swears this one's true. He said that they were in line for lunch, and there was a basket filled with apples. Now, on the uh, apples, somebody had placed a sign that said, Take only one, God is watching. Well, he thought that was pretty funny until he got to the end of the line and saw a big basket of cookies at which someone in a totally different hand had written, Take all you want, God's watching the apples. Let's go to this week's question. All right. Dear Father Joe, is it a sin to have stuff? In the Gospels, Jesus seems to imply that we should give it all to the poor. But then we'd be poor. So what's really being asked of us? That's a great question. And let's be clear. <clears throat> Jesus is asking us to do something that's very difficult to do. And pretty easy to explain. The first principle is when we look at all that we have, we ask ourselves a challenging question. Do I own this stuff? Or does this stuff own me? When something owns us, we aren't willing to part with it. When something owns us, it controls our actions at times. So I think a good attitude that we can pray for the Holy Spirit to give us is this idea that if I have anything I can part with and someone else needs it, I give it to them. I have a friend who is a religious order priest. He's taken a vow of poverty and he takes it very serious. I saw him reading a book while he was staying with me for a short time, and I commented that I really like that book. That looks like one I'd really like to read. Well, the next morning when I woke up, he had left it on the table for me. And here's the thing, I know he hadn't finished it, and I know he liked that book. But that was, to me, a great example of someone who owns stuff, but the stuff doesn't own him. So that's one thing we can challenge ourselves with. It goes back to a fundamental attitude that we have to carry in our heart. One way we know that we own stuff and it doesn't know us is if we're willing to part with it because we care about our brothers and sisters. We have to remember our world needs to be bigger than us. Our world needs to be bigger than our families. And we need to know that when a child starves to death, somewhere in the world, that's our child. When someone is without basic necessities in a country we've never even heard of, that's our family. All of us are united by God. A friend of mine has a bumper sticker that says, Live simply so that others may simply live. Jesus offers us that challenge. Now, also, a great thing to look at is our time. Think about how often we use the word time like we use the word money. Haven't we said before that time is money? We talk about investing our time. We talk about all these things. Well, perhaps it's time for us to talk about parting with our time. Perhaps it's a period of our lives where we can look at what we do and say, you know what, I can volunteer some of my extra time to help make the world better around me. And in that regard, I guarantee that's the kind of sacrifice Jesus is looking for. So let's start investing our time. Volunteer at your local Catholic school. Volunteer for the St. Vincent de Paul or uh, Loaves and Fishes, a homeless shelter. Help out a brother and sister by giving them your most valuable assets, your time and your energy. I hope this challenge starts us all on the path to living like Jesus. Enjoy another day in God's presence.